This past week, the Orthodox Union held their national convention in Jerusalem at the Ramada Hotel. Our correspondent, Menachem Gottlieb, covered the highlights of the convention, the convening of the delegates Saturday night, to debate and pass resolutions and amendments. The voting session at the Orthodox Union National Convention, which took place at the Ramada Hotel in Jerusalem, began at 6.45 and continued past 10.30, with the number of delegates dwindling from 100 to 65 as the night wore on. The session consisted of debate on issues such as the lack of freedom of expression in Israel and the state's treatment of Jews expelled from Gush Katif, as well as those Jewish nationalists who oppose government policy. The issue of Jerusalem was debated as well. I've seen people put on t-shirts and be carted away by the police and thrown into prison for two or three days at a time with no charges. Last night, resolution after resolution, amendment after amendment to the resolutions was defeated. Those resolutions simply had to do with the opportunity for Israelis uh, to speak their mind on any political issue that they wish. Yeah, I was actually very shocked to hear the final outcome, the resolutions uh, that were passed and that weren't passed uh, Motzei Shabbat at the OU convention, because I was there all Shabbat. I came specifically because I heard about certain uh, amendments and resolutions that the others were trying to pass. For example, one that calls for free speech for all in Israel. I thought that was a no-brainer, and from the, uh, uh, the hundreds of people that I spoke to over Shabbat, including most of the delegates, uh, it was pretty clear that uh, the average OU constituent fully agrees with me that there should be free speech for everyone in Israel. That's why you put in the line, our concern for the evacuees from Gush Katif continues as most still face uncertain futures with few and permanent homes and many still unemployed. And then you go on to enumerate all the problems that we're having with the Arabs. Uh, I believe that that should be a separate paragraph where, us, where an action call should be there for the Israeli government to fulfill its promises to the evacuees of Gush Katif and to make all resources necessary available for their immediate reintegration in Israeli society. Rav Avram Shapira, Zatza, former chief rabbi of Israel, Rosh Hashim of Merkaz Arab, issued a Pesach Halacha that is forbidden to dismantle settlements and army bases and to give away any parts of Eretz Israel to the Arabs. The Lubavitcher Rebbe, Zatzal has said that not one inch of Eretz Israel should be given to the Arabs for reasons of Pikuach Nefesh. We came, we got a petition from all of our synagogues, 800 synagogues throughout North America, basically um, supporting our position that Jerusalem belongs to every Jew in the world, wherever they may be, and that we don't feel that there's any right anybody has to ever divide it ever again. I mean, uh, it's been divided for too long. Now, thank God it's under our uh, control, and we should make sure it stays under our control. Among the resolutions existed one promoting civility in speech. This was viewed by many as an attempt to muzzle Jewish nationalists. In the resolution, the OU takes upon itself to criticize those in the Orthodox community who don't speak civilly. Delegates question the criteria of the OU's criticism given its condemnation of an Orthodox rabbi's words this past January. The OU used this type of thing to limit the speech and to condemn a rabbi who said the truth. He talked about what was going on, uh, in, that certain ministers supplied guns to Palestinian terrorists, and Mein Kampf is a, is a, is a, uh, is, is a, uh, is a bestseller in the territories. That the Nazis of our days that's on the books of Israel, they should get the death penalty. And he points it out. The OU condemned him. We should advocate free speech as people who live in a democracy, who cherish democracy, and we should be on record as supporting full democracy and full free speech in this. We have to reject this amendment for the simple reason that it would damage and hurt NCSY. To say that we shouldn't vote for something because someone else may have a different view is contrary to the purpose of us being here. I'm a fellow that usually goes to bed and goes to sleep at 9 o'clock in the evening, but I was up until 1.30 last night because I was so incensed at the failure of leadership of this organization. So what is going on? It's not enough. Not enough that we're not voting for the helping of Jews being put in jail, that now we're going to vote for the OU to condemn people? There was an unsuccessful resolution proposed to send it back for revision without adoption. In a close 30 to 32 vote, the motion failed. And uh, I was kind of surprised. I'm, uh, I came in late for the meeting, but I was surprised how they passed this particular amendment and also the resolution. That we can't say things that are the truth, that we have to watch what we say because we want to work with 
government officials. The question we have to ask ourselves is, to what price? It was claimed that during the vote, three girls sitting in front looked towards David Lukens for direction on how to vote on key issues, such as attempts to support nationalists imprisoned for calling for the expulsion of hostile Arabs and the civility resolution. I'll, I'll go back to the United States with a whole different attitude about uh, this error in judgment, I believe, uh, for the uh, Orthodox Union. It starts with the resolutions, basically with the committee. They meet for many, many months. They go through carefully what we think are important issues. And then it comes to our executive committee. And then it goes to every single synagogue. And they send delegates. So it's a very democratic process. And I know that sometimes people are not, uh, don't think a democratic process works. But we believe it's the best way and the only way to run an organization. In an unrecorded interview, one of the NCSY girls voting admitted to our correspondent Menachem Gottlieb she was requested to come and vote by David Lukens and Jack Abramowitz. According to some present at the conference, Dr. David Lukens, a senior vice president of the OU, solicited at least six members of NCSY and as many as ten to act as voting delegates on his behalf. And I understand that there were some young people who were voting there who really is a question mark whether they should have been there and if they should have, they admitted they didn't know the issues and they looked towards other people and back on how to vote. Our correspondent spoke with David Lukens, who denied all the claims.